Hi, I'm Jeremiah. And this is David Lupp. And we're here with the West Coast Sports Debacle. On today's show, we're actually going to cover a great deal of stories, considering that uh, Brandon Cooks got signed. Mm, resigned. 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 Sorry. Uh, traded and then. Resigned. Resigned. Right. And then we also have the. Uh, what was that other story that you were going to cover today? Um, well, we also have the uh, Manny Machado traded to the Dodgers. That's right. Big um, trade. Yeah. Uh, we can also touch on... There's actually trade talks going on between a West Coast team, the Rangers, and the Washington... Nationals. They're the Nationals? Yeah, they're, they're called the Nationals. That, that's the name of Washington's team? Mm -hmm. Well, this is why we do the West Coast sports debacles, because <laughs> I don't know anything about the East Coast, other than it's very humid, and it's not very nice during the wintertime. Yeah, it's just a bad place to live. Yeah, and I think that's why they're all upset over there, too. Would you rather live there or Chino? Like Chino? As like, in, like, Chino, California. Chino? Really? Yeah. Ugh. It, it smells, you know, it's crime, dirty. Yeah, but you can drive ten minutes away and get out of it. Yeah, but it's You like... have to drive, like, three hours out of the west, east coast to actually find anything of, or any validity. But it's like the United States version of, like, Tijuana. Sorry. Like Tijuana. Yeah, it's awful there. Chino Hills or Chino is not that bad compared to, to Mexico. You're in, you can't <laughs> compare Mexico and Chino. Well, anyways, let's get on topic for right now. We are talking West Coast sports. Yep. So if you guys do like this show, we're gonna go ahead and ask that you like and subscribe us now so that you don't forget about us by the end of the video right. or get annoyed with us halfway through and don't like us anymore. <laughs> That's always an option. Isn't it? I guess there's a possibility. All right. Well, first news, David, break it to us. All right. So it actually happened a couple days ago, but Brandon Cooks was re-signed with the Rams for five years, eighty million dollars. So he's making eight million this year, and then he's gonna be averaging, I believe it was something stupid, like sixteen million a year. I I love the, uh, the extension. Uh, I believe that they're seeing exactly what I've been seeing in him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you've you've really talked him up. I will say that that you have mm -hmm. done a good job trying to sell him to me, even. Right. And that's hard to do. I'm I'm not a big fan of Brandon Cooks, especially guys that are short like that. Mm -hmm. I I'm short, and I know what it's like to be short. And there's no no winning with that. It looks like his original contract was gonna be for eight million dollars, so he right. doubled his money for this year too. Well, he's uh that's gonna extend. He's making the eight million this year, and then the contract starts the following year. Oh, okay. So he's gonna be making eight point four six million this year. Right. Cool. Gotcha. Yeah. So that, next that's where season. I was now now. Let me ask you this. Mm. Do you think that this is going to affect Aaron Donald's Absolutely. contract? How can it not? I mean, $80 million going to a... I mean, as much as I love Brandon Cooks, th these are the, the facts. You're paying $80 million for five years for a young but undersized speed receiver, which you alluded to um, a, a couple of videos in the past where what happens when you age as a speed receiver? You slow down. And when you don't have those, the big physical capabilities, like say, like a Calvin Johnson, a Mike or, Evans, or at least the shiftiness of a Jerry Rice okay, to do yeah. that, like he, it, he's flatline speed. That is, that is a one-trick pony, basically. That's why you don't see his production jump up in a New England offense, where it did great in New Orleans because he was not really known yet it kind of worked out for him yeah but 16 million dollars is a lot of money and it look to put it this way they're not even paying Aaron Donald that much money right. or or Nadama can sue that much money yet all right they're gonna have to wait for Nadama can be gone next year in order to do the Aaron Donald deal because if it's seven million dollars on the books for this year if Donald wants more money this year, they're going to have to pull that money out of somewhere. And from my cap video, which if you guys haven't seen already, Rams fans, go check it out. It's the Rams cap debacle. Mm -hmm. It's a great video on the inside of all this. But basically what I had seen is that there's four, 
there's basically like four million dollars that they have extra. And so I had suggested earlier that they could just tap it on to a sit like, you know, seven, make maybe make it eight million this year, nine million if they could, and then fluff it up for the rest of it. This kind of puts I don't know, the brakes on it, I wanna say. Because now you just took all that cap space and shrunk it into a little a portion of the team. Mm -hmm. He's not going to make or break the season for them. I I feel like this was a bad contract. See, I, I think it actually... It doesn't really change anything in regards to this season because he was already going to be under contract for them this season regardless. So all it does to me is kind of lock down this offense for the next couple of years. They're basically going all in saying, we're going to make our push right now with, you know... Gurley is not going to get any younger. Uh, yeah. Goff is going to be reaching his prime. Uh, you know, you never know what's so, going to happen so with you and think Donald. That's it. That's that's what it is. Yes, is it, it's think, Goff's prime, so they're setting him up to have a target for those years. I do because you, you look at it, they have no, virtually no tight end weapon. Um, yeah. You got Cooper Cup, who I think is a good slot receiver, but another undersized guy. Robert Woods, who I you know, good receiver. But I think the offense last year made him a appear better than what he really is. Um, I can see that. Because you look at him in Buffalo, he wasn't all that great. Sammy Watkins in Buffalo wasn't all that great. I, I think the offense schemed and uh, the game script allowed for people like that to come in and do well. Uh, I think this offense still revolves around Todd Gurley. Um, and know, and I, I agree. I yeah. agree 100% that Todd Gurley is going to be the, the Formula One fuel of this right. offense. Like, without him, it's just a, a million dollar vehicle just sitting there at the track, you know, not able right. to do anything. I think he's just as irreplaceable as Jared Goff. Uh, you look at it, say, like, if Cooks were to go down, you still have a couple viable weapons. If Gurley goes down or if Goff but goes down. But if he goes down at that price tag, that's what concerns me. Mm. Especially the way he got blindsided in the Super Bowl, too. Like, he got de-cleated. Yeah. And, and, and he didn't come back for the rest of that game. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that that was kind of putting him in an unnecessary situation for that. And I don't think the Rams are going to be using him in that capacity. Well, I hope not. But speaking of Goff, you were talking about quarterbacks. I just saw this right now, and it only pertains to us because of the guy who's in the article is now a 49er. Jimmy Garoppolo actually talked with somebody at an NFL network, apparently. And says that he felt he was better than Tom Brady. I, I want to hear your opinion on this. I mean, I can say I'm to better than Tom Brady, but that doesn't make it true. I mean, anyone can believe anything they want, you know. So, I mean, that doesn't really have any uh, validity to it at all. Um, I think it's just kind of hype, if anything. I, I think give it a month and no one will remember he even said it. I thought in my head, I'm better than this dude. It was always a quiet confidence. Wow, Bleacher Report, bringing some news. There's not very many times when I really like to follow news from other sources besides the team itself. Mm -hmm. Bleacher Report does do a really good job. I followed them for the last, like, I don't know, six years or so. Mm -hmm. Really good up-to-date information. If you want to read articles, go for it. If you want to see more videos like this, like I said, subscribe. Right. And, I mean, I kind of see where Garoppolo is coming from. You played sports. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure most of our viewers right now have played sports or are currently playing sports. Uh, I'm a firm believer in the fact of to be truly great at any sport, you have to be right there between highly cocky and arrogant to really get to that next level. <laughs> what is that? Sorry, but this one actually has to do with Chargers. Uh... Who is so, that? So, so this is... Um, is that LaShawn? No, no. Oh, Brandon, no, that's this, too much of a tip. This no. is Chad Ochocinco Johnson. Okay. Who went to Smith and Wolinski's Steakhouse. And that's in Miami, Florida, apparently. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at the writ. So, apparently, the person who... <laughs> I'm guessing that they what? were a Chargers fan. I'm, I'm guessing 
that apparently the the waiter was a Chargers fan. Yeah, I, I can see where this is it, going. And now. and so he tipped the guy on a hundred and forty dollar bill, two hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah. And he says in the bottom under his signature, "I once had two hundred and sixty yards against the Chargers. I love you." <laughs> that is hilarious. That's awesome. Like, that is great. So I like it when players do stuff like that. Especially the retired ones. I've been watching the flag yeah. football. Have you watched that at all? A, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, you know it's 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 somewhat exciting. It is a little down. There is some boring parts because it's coverage. Everybody knows it's coverage. And when they run the ball, it's kind of effective, but it's not really effective. Well, let's be clear here. When you're saying flag football, you're not talking about the NFL, right? Because, I mean, that's becoming flag football rapidly. Oh, well, no, I'm not talking about <laughs> penalty flag football. No, either. I just mean, like, it's becoming two-hand touch. No, that's like, what I'm saying. Yeah. Penalty flag football, because mm. every time they touch somebody, the flag goes out, just like in flag football. So could, it's could penalty you imagine flag. a guy like Ronnie Lott playing today? He, he would be nobody, because he'd be penalized out of the league. Yeah, they probably would have already boycotted his play style and yeah, made, I, called him a risk or an injury hazard to the rest of the players. I mean, even someone mo more modern day, like Ray Lewis. I don't think he would be able to be much in today's NFL because those hard hitters are... You can't hit them too high, well, you can't and, hit them too low. And remember, they came from a time when the hurry-up offense was something that you didn't really see. That's true. Nowadays, well, I mean, it's all hurry up. They didn't have the air Coriel and everything, but I mean, it was very far and few between. Oh, exactly what I'm saying, yeah. though. You have guys that were, were running quarterbacks, mm -hmm. but you didn't see them as much as you saw a Peyton Manning or a Tom Brady throwing the ball around. Right. Like, I'm not talking top tier versions of those two guys. I'm talking about sitting duck Peyton Manning at the end of his career. Yeah. Or a Tom Brady when he first started when he got lucky as crap. Because. That's lucky. Yeah, dude, that's luck. His first season, go watch the game film. That's luck. Everything since then is his hard work and determination, and I give him a ton of credit for that. But I do not give that first season any validity at all. Okay. Because you watch him play all the way up to the Rams game. He played like crap in that Rams game for the whole first half. They came back in that game, too, because they made good offensive and defensive adjustments in yeah. that game. But at the same time, Belichick saw something in him, obviously, in order for them to go, you know, and for that game. Brady could have drive saw a sock puppet and made him into a good quarterback. Look what he did with Jacoby Brissett, and look what he did with, like, 90% of this Joe Schmo quarterbacks. Matt Castle. Who the hell is Matt Castle? Yeah. Nobody knows. But anyways, we, I, we could talk and debate about Patriots oh, yeah. all day long because yeah. he... All right, I'm not even going to say that he's a huge fan, because he's not. Not a Patriots fan. I'm no. a Brady fan. Brady fan. And I talk Garoppolo all day, too. I'm, I'm a big fan of Garoppolo. I like the guy a lot. I'm actually stoked to see him play this year. Can't wait for it. Yeah. Um, let's get on. Oh, so with holdouts, Khalil Mack still hasn't signed. That seems to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. I can, him, him and Le'Veon Bell both are kind of making big deals of this. Well, they're not going to give up either, no. so... Reggie McKenzie, sign the dude, please. Well, allegedly it's Gruden that's making all the decisions. Uh, no, because Gruden said that they would pay him whatever. Oh, well, that's, and that's why I'm kind of confused is because I, I heard a report shortly after Gruden signed saying that we're going to give complete control to Gruden, which is why they brought in Martin and Jordy and everything. But you were right, Gruden did say, I, I heard him say, I'll pay him whatever he wants to come back and play. But yeah, he's still do, unsigned. Do you think that Khalil Mack might be pulling a Kawhi Leonard? I don't think he is. I, I think I, I completely see where he's coming from. There are, I mean, being being real about this, there are probably under ten players in the NFL, regardless of the position, that are better than Khalil Mack, and each of those are going to be disputable. So when you're that much of a talent and you make that much of an impact on the field on any given play, you want to be paid as much as, or if, if not more than the next best guy. So when you got other people getting paid as much as you. But here's the problem with that. He's waiting on Aaron Donald to get his contract so he can find out how much the most expensive it's always a pass game. rush. But this is a ridiculous amount of time. Let, this is redundant. Let me ask you a question. This is going to make... Alright, so I was... Once again, I think he's going to get hurt if he plays. 
I said we should have traded him around the draft. I, I, everybody probably thought I was crazy, mm -hmm. but I did say it, that we needed to trade him around the draft because that was the only way we are going to make anything off of him. Let me ask you a question. Do you think there's any way that he does not suit up and play week one of the regular season? I think he suits up week one, mm -hmm. gets hurt week one, and is okay. out for at least six weeks. He'll come back. He realize the error of his ways in those six weeks, come back too soon, get hurt again like Carr, mm -hmm. and then be out again. I don't think that the way the Raiders' success is not going to be determined by Khalil Mack this year. That's why I think that this contract is not being given out the way that he thinks it should be. Yeah. Because once again, like I said in that other video, which you can should go check out because there's a lot more details to this other than what I'm about to say right now. This is going to be hyperbole that you're going to be able to judge one sentence off of and that's it. Basically, he's not worth the money. He's not worth it because his defenses haven't been in the top 10. None of them. Even the year that they actually went to the playoffs, the defense still wasn't a top 10 defense. Turnovers, sacks, none of it. Well, the thing about that though is he produces pretty sol solidly on his own. Um, I don't think you can necessarily blame Khalil Mack for poor defensive play elsewhere. You know, all, I mean, I've said it before, you know, on Raider videos, which is every time I think of the Raiders defense, I just picture, you know, a little dump off to the running back. That breaks break, for 500 he, yards. Yes. Yeah. He, absolutely. And you can't necessarily blame Khalil Mack for that when he's rushing the passer. They throw it to the other side. It, it could be a screenplay or whatever. It doesn't matter. The point is, there's way too many missed tackles on that defense, which allegedly is being fixed this offseason. I um, hope so. I really do. Because, yeah. honestly, I don't want another excuse for Khalil. Because yeah. that's all I hear right now is excuses of why mm -hmm. the defense hasn't been good. He keeps blaming all these other players, but a true leader, a Ray Lewis, um, a Jason Pierre-Paul, um, Many uh, Junior Seau, Sean Merriman, you think of big defensive stars, that's no excuse to them. Mm -hmm. I held Richard Sherman's even saying that how old he is, he's still saying that his defense is going to be legit this year. Well, of course. But no, it, there's a sense of pride that comes mm -hmm. with it. I don't ever hear Khalil Mack saying, I believe in my defense around me either. So. If he That's doesn't true. believe in his teammates, why the hell are they going to believe in themselves? Mm -hmm. That's a big problem. And Aaron Donald, same thing for you, buddy. You're asking for a lot of money when you live in L.A. Yeah. We, you're going to have brand endorsements. You're going to make a lot of other money because you're in L.A. Well, I, Take the money and yeah. run, dude. Absolutely. You guys got to start thinking about this. Like, There's guys like ourselves that are just scrounging for money. and You guys make bank. I do think that Khalil Mack is more likely than Aaron Donald to get paid what they're asking for, though. Um, I actually think the opposite. I, I think I think that the Rams owner and GM are more likely to not to not penny pinch it because Reggie offered that huge contract to Carr the year before, mm -hmm. and what happened the next year? He got hurt. Right. So twenty-five million dollars down the drain. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's a lot of money to be thrown out. Right. Khalil holding out like this shows his maturity at this point, too. Well, I mean, it is a business, though. No, not when, not when the year before you're, you're commending one guy for sticking around during training camp when he wasn't getting paid, mm -hmm. and now you're doing the same thing. That's a good point. Like, I still yeah. don't stand by that. that I good. don't. That's there's, a very good point. There's no... All right, so we need to get on, because uh, we're, we're running out of time here, and we're going to be yeah. going on for forever. So, let's see basketball news. Mm -hmm. So, L.A. just signed Michael Beasley. Okay. Um, Tony Parker's with the Hornets now. And Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. There's finally been a verdict, guys. Toronto. Mm -hmm. We talked about him a couple times on the show already. Um, you suggested LeBron to Toronto. Yeah. I thought you were crazy. I didn't think a superstar could go there. I didn't think there was going to be enough talent there. Or talent to trade to get the player of that caliber and 
You know what? I'm going to give you that, that you were closer to being right on that one than I was. Cause well, thank you, sir. I tried to chase that one down towards L.A. only to find out that I was wrong. And then I decided to chase down towards the Celtics, and then I was wrong again. Well, just Toronto made a little bit more sense to me than the Celtics or L.A. for um, one of those type of players. Uh, LeBron going to L.A. was a complete surprise to me. But I, I honestly, when I saw the Toronto picked up, well, not really picked up, traded for Kawhi, um, I was just, like, the initial reaction, which I was actually with you when I saw that, and I was kind of thinking, yeah, I kind of saw that coming. You know? like So, I mean, I think that Toronto is going to be the team to beat out of the East. Um, that West is probably still going to be Golden State, but, I mean, you got a lot of uh, good teams out of the West. Well, there's some more interesting news here. What's up? I just saw right now that, one, Dirk Nowitzki's back with the Mavs. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. We're all happy about that. But then a Chinese team may pursue Dwayne Wade to come to China? Really? Yeah, that's interesting. I, I would think that he'd retire his career out there. You didn't know that? I did not hear about oh, that. Oh, and... If you guys are like David here and didn't know about this already, um, Car Carmelo Anthony sounds like he's signing with the Rockets. So another West Coast team, wow. big time. Yeah. Big time Texas team coming out bigly. Yeah. I think that's going to be the, the, West the West Championships or Finals or however they, they word it in basketball. But it will be Houston versus Golden State for that. Le LeBron well, on his own won't carry the Lakers to I, that point. All right. I disagree. I'm actually, I've never sided with the Lakers. Never once. Mm -hmm. But this time I will. Because I saw something out of the Lakers and LeBron and the signings that they've done that I haven't seen in a while. Defense. That's true. Heading on to baseball news. We've dragged on too long with basketball, so yeah. we're going to go straight into this. Uh, you had some news about uh, Dodgers, right? Yeah, they went and got Manny Machado for pennies on the dollar. Uh, I don't know if Baltimore owed the Dodgers, a, you know, like a, a bet, they lost a bet or something, or they whatever. probably owed him a blanket. Some ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, they they probably helped them out in the past at some point, and now because they're trying to clear out Machado and start the rebuild process, I I can see what they're trying to do here. Dodgers, you are having a chance to actually take the division now. So it makes sense for this move. Yeah. Again, I think that the, the Dodgers are making some questionable moves for their future, though. Yes, they are winning now. But in the future, is it going to still be happening? I say no, to be honest. I think that the Dodgers have a lot of uh, overhyped names on their roster. Uh, Yasiel, John Peterson, Corey Seager to be determined. But, we'll see. Yeah. Well, but they also have one of the worst playoff pitchers of probably all time. Yeah. Playing Kershaw. Mm -hmm. and he, he rivals almost to the point of Randy Johnson with how bad the season was. This past year, he wasn't too bad. But his Achilles heel in previous years has always been the same. What are you struggles. talking about against Houston? He was the big goose that they were destroying. No, I mean, before that series, I, I, I liked what I saw out of him. Uh, I mean, he wasn't doing Kershaw numbers. But I think as a solid ace, um, he was he was doing all right. You know, no, not like Chris Sale or anything. All right. Well, anyways, congratulations, welcome to the Dodgers. <clears throat> At the trade news, Rangers and Nets discussing Hamels trade. Mm -hmm. Hamels is a great pitcher. He was a, a MVP of a World Series, I believe, too. Um, he ended up pitching really good for the Phillies back in one of their World Series runs. Yeah. He's been an All Star four times. And I think that the that if they're going to get this deal done, they're going to have to give the Rangers some good prospects because the Rangers are rebuilding in the process oh, yeah. without Andrus really being there. You can tell that Elvis Andrus hasn't really been on his team this season or been around even. No, I mean, Belcher is kind of not the Belcher of old anymore. And the, the Rangers definitely need to rebuild. But the best thing that I like about... Hamill going to the Nationals is the fact that he's not going to be relied upon as that ace. They still have um, Scherzer, Strasburg, 
and bring him in now. You've got a couple other guys in there that you can mix in that are pretty solid. The Nationals are gonna are going all in right now. And I, I think if you, match, I, I don't blame them. Yeah, the the East and I'm sorry, the the National League is kind of wide open right now. I think the Yankees and the Sox are gonna run away with the American League. It, it does look like that. Uh, Red Sox are seven game or five games up on the Yankees, but they're 19 games up on everybody else in the AL East. Yeah. Um, AL Central's looking Cleveland, pretty solid with Cleveland, which isn't a surprise. And then the AL we have the, the West. Man, the, the Dodgers the, are the Angels. Angels, fifty and fifty. Come on. Yeah. Like, yeah, I thought they were gonna be so much better this year. I, I didn't. I never believed in the Otani hype. Uh, I, you're gonna hear it from me. Mike Trout needs to be traded. There's no. There's That's almost like me saying. Lil needs to get traded. A lot of people are gonna be upset with that one. Yes, but but here's the thing. You gotta hear me out. They're 50 and 50. Okay. There's no way they're making playoffs. Even if they did, you know, they would up. have to have like one of the greatest second halves of the season. So, yeah. Say they go on, on like that run the Dodgers went on when Puig came up and then they won like 30 out of 35 games or whatever, whatever the number was. Say they go on some Cinderella story type run. Then what? They still got to face the Sox. They got to face the Yankees. They got to face Houston and That's Cleveland. True. They're and, not going to win. And Houston's in the same division as them. It's going to be too difficult. Exactly. There's, um, there's no need to keep the best player in baseball on a bad team. When you can go and get four or five, six pieces, look at what uh, Machado was traded for. You go get pieces worth more than Machado, and you make you the team better. You aren't kidding about the NL standings being close. The NL West right now mm -hmm. is basically a crapshoot if you're not the Padres. Right. Like, San Francisco, Colorado, Arizona, and L.A., all within five games mm -hmm. of each other. That is insane. That is competitiveness at its finest. And the kicker, Kershaw hasn't gone on his major DL stint yet. Seriously? Nope. And he gets hurt every single year at some point in the season. That's true. And if he gets hurt during that crucial playoff push, they're done. And that's when the Diamondbacks will overtake them, yep. or the Rockies, or the Giants. My, my vote hey, is we're the Diamondbacks. forgetting. We're forgetting. Mm -hmm. Forgetting that the Giants were a great team the last couple of years. Yeah. So to just cancel them out is not not okay to and do either. And they're doing it with uh, some solid veterans, too. You know, they brought in uh, McCutcheon, uh, Posey's up there in age, um, Hunter Pence. Buster Posey was always a great catcher, though. Yeah, he was more. I think he was more valuable with his bat than his glove. Well, and but. Will Rodriguez is really bringing it as the possible NL Rookie of the Year, apparently, according to most beat reporters. That's, that's possible. <clears throat> so um, that that changes things for him. I didn't even realize that they had gotten a new young guy that was going to pitch that well. Yeah, he's he's kind of flying a little bit uh, under the radar. I think he's actually better than what the hype is. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Um, I'm I'm a believer in uh, Will Rodriguez myself. Yeah, it reminds me of who's that? You're gonna say uh, Benny the Jet Rodriguez. Oh god! <laughs> uh, look, I thought you you saw the picture, so I, I thought you were gonna say Samarja with the long hair. Oh uh, no, the... he looks like Lincecum with that long hair. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's more what I would have said was Lincecum. Now is it because San Francisco? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm biased. Guys, <laughs> you know, like Lincecum was probably like one of my favorite too. Really? Yeah, I okay. really liked him. He was he was entertaining to watch. See, I've always been a Cueto fan. He's my favorite ball player. Gotcha. That makes sense though too. I mean, He's even a being guy. a Cardinals fan, you know, when he was on the Reds, I still rooted for Cueto. Well, oh my gosh. Diamond Middle Bucks. of the fourth, and Diamondbacks were putting up a six to nothing score on the Cubs. Mm -hmm. It's awesome for my Diamondbacks. Yeah. Goldschmidt goes mm -hmm. yard, and it's good for the rest of the league going up against the Cubs too. Yeah, and speaking of uh, favorite teams, my team currently is pitching a no-hitter. Um, De Ponce de Leon is throwing a no-no versus, I believe... Oh, you talked about it, it's over. They probably just broke it right now. No, it's fine. You know, I, got, uh, I believe they, in my they, cards. They broke it. They, um, it's going to be broken now. You talked the, about it. The game's not over, and you don't talk about a no-no before the no-no is over. I'm not a superstitious kind of guy. So. No, that's baseball superstition. That's like <laughs> baseball gods. You're, you're, you're From like 1885. Oh, been back when it first started, back in the Civil War days, you know, they were probably instituting this, this rule of you can't say that. 
And, you know, they were throwing rocks, and they still were thinking that. Rocks with so, sticks. Yeah, and they were still saying, you don't talk about a no-hitter. <laughs> I don't think they had a, such a thing as a no-hitter back then. No-hitter, they just don't hit the ball. It's 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 universal. Is that Christopher Walken? Uh, it's like, uh, uh, it's something like that. I don't know, <laughs> just something. But anyways, guys, we've talked a lot about sports for you guys. If you guys have any topics that you guys want to see talked about on our show, Hit us up down in the comments below, mm -hmm. and like I said, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you guys can be reminded every time we post. Right. And that may not just be sports videos. That could be everything from trivia, Star Wars, Star Wars movies, mm -hmm. and more. We'll, we'll be talking a lot, a lot for you, for you guys, for you guys, for you guys. <laughs> fantasy sports. Oh yeah, that's right. Check out on Fridays, fantasy sports. We will be coming back. In August. I'm mm -hmm. sorry that we took the time off, but it's necessary. Yeah, we're, we're bringing you better product. Yeah. A lot better Instead product. of trying to produce, you know, just mass produce it, we're trying to bring you quantity. Quality? Is that the term I'm looking for? Quality and quantity. Yeah, instead of just quantity. Quantinality. We're bringing you better videos. <laughs> That's trademarked and copied by Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Being first, you're last. That was high when I said that. I mean, hell, you could even be fifth. <laughs>